Visiting with Hewell Hauser is made possible through a generous grant from the Ralph M. Parsons Foundation. Well, hello, everybody. I'm Hewell Hauser, and here we are in the heart of Hollywood. We're right here on Hollywood Boulevard. We're standing in front of the world-famous Grauman's Egyptian Theater, which has just recently been restored. It's the home of the American Cinematheque. They show movies in there all the time. We have this beautiful courtyard here. This was one of the original movie palaces here in Hollywood, and it's a wonderful thing that it's been restored to its former glory. But we are not here to do a story on the Egyptian Theater. We're here to do a story on this little restaurant next to the Egyptian theater. It's called the Pig and Whistle. And it's been here for a long time. And here to tell us about the Pig and Whistle are Robert Noodleman from Hollywood Heritage, Ken Bernstein from the Los Angeles Conservancy, two fine gentlemen and two <laughs> fine organizations. Tell us a little bit about the Pig and Whistle, Robert, because it's an interesting story. Well, the Pig and Whistle was a small chain of restaurants that went from about San Diego up to Seattle. And they started in the 20s. This particular branch here opened in 1927. Uh, it was done by Morgan Walls and Clements, the architects who also did the El Capitan building down the street from here. Now, was it initially built to be part of this Egyptian theater complex? Well, no, the Egyptian opened in 1922, okay. and then five years later this opened. There was another building underneath which they covered over with this facade, and actually that facade's still underneath it. And what was the idea of the Pig and Whistle? Was it a version of a fast food restaurant back then? Was it a... It was kind of a combination of a soda fountain. They made their own line of candy. They had ice creams, things like that, and sandwiches. It wasn't a really elaborate restaurant, but it was like a family type of place with affordable food. And it had entertainment. They had a small pipe organ in the back they would play. Really? Yeah, it was the whole Hollywood type of idea here. And do you think people would have left the movies and come over to the Pig and Whistle? I mean, that was kind of a, they worked together, didn't they? Right. Well, they pushed that because over to the side over here is actually a side entrance off the Egyptian courtyard going into the Pig and Whistle with the little Malibu tiles with the Pig and Whistle on it. And then they had a display box to put the menus in so people could see that. And that's been done again now. Ah, so people would have come out of the theater and gone in that side door over there. Right, that was one way to get them coming and going from the theater. <laughs> and how did they come up with the name Pig and Whistle? Well, I've never heard how. It just was, as Ken was saying, one of those whimsical ideas from probably in the 20s, which gave a creative logo of the little pig playing a whistle or a flute. And you can see it, they use it up on the top there and on the side on the marquee. Oh, yeah. And there's a PW right on top of it, Pig and Whistle. Pig and Whistle. All right. Now, have you learned anything from listening to this, or did you pretty well know all of this well, to start with? I learned a little bit as well. Um, you know, this was one of the uh, Hollywood hangouts, in addition to being a family restaurant. So you had Hollywood stars here, everyone from Valentino to Shirley Temple, but you also had families coming here and making a day of it on Hollywood Boulevard. Now, wait a minute. How do we know that Shirley Temple went in the pig and whistle? Because every, uh, if Shirley Temple was everywhere people say she was, how did you know that? I, you know, just How do we know that, Robert? Well, it would sound like a place she would go to. <laughs> She'd go now. Yeah, exactly. They serve Shirley Temples in here too now, I think. Ah, good. So, so really this was kind of one of the hot spots hot on Hollywood spot. Boulevard. But also a family restaurant, a gathering place for everyone uh, in Hollywood. And for years it sat, well, it became a numero uno pizza, I think, for a while. It was while. a pants store. It closed in 1953 and the interior was auctioned off and it mostly went through different retail places and then Numero Uno was in, they put a drop ceiling in, redid the walls and just basically made a mess out of it. There was a fire in the back when they left the ovens on one night by mistake and that caused damage in the back and then the new owners who've come in here and now restored the building back, the original structure inside. Yeah, yeah. so that's what we're gonna go inside and see how the pig and whistle has found a new life along with the, the Egyptian theater, we now have the pig and whistle restored. So we have a nice little one-two combination going here of two of Hollywood's gems coming back. We've gone all the way back to the 20s and it works a lot better now than it was doing in the 90s. Absolutely, well let's go inside the pig and whistle, see what's going on inside. Now before we even got inside, Robert stopped us and pointed out the, the roof here. 
Right, this is the ceiling of the marquee in the front, which was uh, built in 1927, when at some point, at least 30 to 40 years ago, they had put stucco over this ceiling you see here, and it was like just a smooth area with a rough coat on it. None of this was seen, and they found it when they started punching holes to put a light in up there, and all of a sudden the stucco fell down, and there was this other ceiling underneath. It's been hidden up there for years. And it wasn't any of the photos, because all the shots showed at a different angle, so no one knew that was there, oh. until just by accident, and they went back up and restored it, and now that's part of the entryway This here. is beautiful, and you pointed out something else. I don't think we're ever gonna get inside this wonderful, original tile. All right, this is the original Malibu tiles that were made for the uh, Pig & Whistle, the special design for them. Uh, they were used out in the counters, downstairs, all around the building. Most of the stuff upstairs was all gone, but there were pieces of them downstairs that were still left to the side or buried on the other parts of walls that weren't being used. So they found this and brought it back. They removed them, brought them up here now where people could actually see them again in the front, cleaned them back up and restored it, used them up here. Got them on the front entrance here and look over here. We've got them all in the walls here and you've even got them on the table. Right, you can pick and whistle on your table now, and they use the intact ones here in the middle, uh -huh. and then there were sections that were broken, they just inserted oh, them look. around the side. So they even used the broken historic So nothing top. got thrown out, right, everything was wow. kept in. Now this is creative use of bringing something oh, back. Absolutely, it's, it's one of the great tales of really urban archaeology in a sense, uh, finding these materials and uh, finding new uses for them, the tiles. Uh, are a, a story in themselves. The architects Morgan, Walls, and Clements were known for their use of tile. In fact, they did the Adamson House out in Malibu, which is uh, now a state park and uh, is known for their use so of these very were, similar these tiles. Were the famous tiles made yeah. in California right. back in the early part of the century. Exactly. And they commissioned a tile with the little pig and whistle on there. That's right. It so was their own unique tile. Right, it was a custom design done for the restaurant. And there was their logo you see on other little items too, the pig playing the whistle. This is the tile version. There are other ones that we have inside too of it. Well, let's get inside, fellas. We've spent half the program outside. We hadn't even gotten inside yet. Okay, we're finally inside, and I bet you're the guy I'm supposed to meet. Hi, I'm Chris Breed. You are the... Owner. The owner of this place. Owner of the pig and whistle, yes. Now, how did you become the owner of the pig and whistle? Because this place had fallen upon pretty hard times. And I don't know whether looking at it the way it looked a couple of years ago, you had to have some vision, didn't you, to kind of see what it has become? Yeah, well, actually, a broker friend of mine, uh, John Trunson, um, he works in the area, and I told him I was looking for something unique in Hollywood uh, to bring back a, a part of old Hollywood. It was something I had uh, back from when my father used to be into the movie business. And uh, he'd found me this space called the Pig and Whistle. He said it was the Pig and Whistle. When I came to see it, it was a pizza <laughs> joint, which was a, uh, a little rundown called Umaruno Pizza Kitchen, I think. And um, I went down. He told me about the Pig and Whistle and when it was around. And I saw the sign outside uh, saying that it was uh, 1927. So I went down to the library downtown, looked up some uh, information and found an old article it was about a seven page article in the daily citizen and i read up there and as i was reading i got more excited about this project and that's how it came about and you've done a wonderful job because these ceilings now these are original yeah well they're actually a copy of the original the original was uh, a, a little broken up a little too much so we had to actually make some silicone casts of the original really? and, and remake this ceiling. Boy, what a wonderful job. And the, now the tile is original, we saw out front. Oh, that's definitely original. We, uh, we got that from the basement in the walls, uh, off the walls. As you walk down into the basement, there was all these magnificent tiles. So we had to take them off and have them all individually cut the back of them to get the old cement and plaster off them. And then we bought them up and displayed them in the front. Have you had old timers come in telling you stories about remembering coming in here in the 20s and 30s and 40s? Yeah, actually, uh, well, I have one here today, Lois, and uh, she contacted me about a year ago when I was in the middle of construction. I don't know how she got my number, but she worked on getting it and uh, told me her father uh, was the general manager through the 30s and the 40s. So is this Lois uh, over this here? This is Lois over here. Oh, she's waving at us. Hi, Lois. 
How are you doing? I'm just doing fine. You're back in the pig and whistle. It brings fond memories back. Now, your dad was the manager of this place? He was the manager of In it. the 40s? 30s and 40s. Oh, my gosh. And what was it like to come here back then? This looks a lot, lo a lot like it was as far as molding and ceiling. And I remember the organ being aloft over there. And Claude, had, Claude Reamer played the organ while you dying. They had an organ in here. Yes. Chris, you got to bring the organ back and get it going again. <laughs> you got to make it historic. Actually, somebody did call me about that organ, and it is in the valley somewhere, and I am meant to be going to see that in the next few weeks. Oh, my gosh. Now, were you a little girl? How did, what, I was at Hollywood High School. So did you come over here 10th, every day? 11th, 12th. No, 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 because it would look tacky for me to bump in and come into Daddy's store, and I didn't do that. He, first, he kind of pushed us out, the teenagers, down to Brown's Hot Fudge Sunday oh place. Oh, my gosh. That was a great place, <laughs> Right, too. right. But we, if we got in here and took up a booth, that was just too much money lost for the manager. Was this a hot place? Was I don't remember it as hot. It was elegant. Elegant. It was high style. It was, it was very, very richly deserved for its reputation that it had. And there were... I just found out today, I thought it was only three or four stores downtown, but there were six of them downtown. Six pig and whistles. And back of this box of candy Chris has is the, is the whole bunch of locations of them. And there's pig and whistles everywhere. Now, do you know how they came up with the name pig and whistle? Yes. Chris's publicist, him, said that it originally was called Piggin. P-I-G-G-E-N. Piggin. Piggin. P-I-G-G-E-N. Mm -hmm. And instead of a pig, and then an N, and an apostrophe, and then whistle, it was pig and whistle. So pig and whistle was a stein that the, the British, I think, yeah, right, it Chris? Was. It was an old lead cup, actually. Lead cup. The pig and was an old lead cup, and it was around uh, Christmas time. They'd drink out of this lead cup, and the, the whistle was the wine. So the piggin was the cup and the whistle was the wine and so you drink So instead of pig and whistle, it was piggin and whistle. Yes, that's right. Oh my. He's got it all right and I've got it kind of tongue twisted. God, no, but that's <laughs> great. That, 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 that's kind of close. Well, are you having a good time coming oh, back? it's been just wonderful. I hope Chris I is buying you lunch this. today. Is he buying you lunch? It's on oh. him. <laughs> <laughs> we may take it home in a box, but I'm going to take it. But what happened? was all the waitresses wore snoods. If their hair was down to here, you put it in a snood so you wouldn't get hair in your food. And all of the waitresses had hair nets on, and I think they should do that today. Wow, come back to that old look. Well, not the old, least you don't want hair in your food. Oh. <laughs> no, seriously. But anyway, what else did I remember? The monkeys, right outside here, at the right of the pig and whistle, was a cage full of monkeys, and it stopped everybody on the sidewalk to watch those monkeys. And of wow. course, then they came in the pig. So that was was that the idea of? I don't of, know who did it. Wow. I don't remember who did it. So that. you got to put monkeys out front. Oh, so, now. Yeah, <laughs> actually, there's a few monkeys out on Hollywood Boulevard. So <laughs> <laughs> I'd love to see the planning department when you ask them to get a cage of monkeys out there. You know, I don't know. The the, the 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 soda fountain was over there. The um, uh, a candy fountain, a counter was over here. I'm so excited talking to you. <laughs> it was over here, and I don't know why, but I thought the candy box looked like uh, the old C's with black letters on it. Well, and now I wait a minute. We have here. some things here. This is look at this. This is the old pig and whistle candy box right here. You That's remember a, these? No, no, I don't. I thought they were white with black letters. Wow, where did you get this? this? Actually, I, uh, Robert Noodleman, who I think you've interviewed, sure. uh, bought that in, and uh, he bought actually quite a few uh, samples. That we've also got uh, a little clay pig here too. Which... Oh, look at this, Robert. Where did you get this? Uh, Pasadena Community College swap meet. Oh my gosh, had you ever seen these? Come on over here. Let's get a <laughs> look at that little pig. You've got to remember, this is over 60 years old. Look this at this place. Let's see. Oh, isn't that oh, great? That's exactly what these little, what do you call that? Pfeiffer? 
And what would it have been a used whistle. for? Well, what yeah, would we this think have... it was used for candies inside, little candies. So you would have just taken all I see. Oh, we this also is... have uh, one of the old menus here. Oh, look at the menu with the pigs marching down from the castle. This was from when? Uh, this actual menu, they printed these on a daily basis, and this one was uh, 1944. Oh, my goodness. Uh-oh, I don't want to drop any historical documents here. Yeah. 1944. Wow. Wow, this really... So you're, you've heard these stories before. It's wonderful. My, my grandfather was so proud of this place. They've, they've continued a wonderful heritage. I'm so proud of Chris and the way it looks. It's just magnificent, really. Wow. And you know, another thing Chris does, he mingles with the people that are eating here. My father did that. He'd go up and say, are you enjoying your dinner? And is there anything I can do for you or help you and whatnot? So and you're that, carrying on the tradition in many, many ways. Oh, definitely. And I think with the Egyptian theater and what they did, the renovation on the Egyptian, that we've brought this whole area back and uh, bringing some of the old uh, movies back, which we, we play here on the big screens in, in the Pig and Whistle, bringing some of the old classical movies back, that people are really enjoy, enjoying the era again. You're an old-fashioned sort of guy, aren't you? Yeah, I am, you actually. Like I love it. I love it. Bringing yeah, really Hollywood do. back to the yeah, I don't glory days. I don't think this will be my only project I try and bring back to Hollywood and uh, I've got a lot of support now from uh, the chamber and stuff so we're working on it. Wow, well let's get a shot of the two of you all together because here's the, see his cell phone is ringing. Your father didn't have a cell phone, did he? There was no such thing. <laughs> no, I don't have one. But the pig and whistle, here is the, here is the generational, you're kind of passing the Passing the pig. Here, let's stand here. The pig is what brings you all together here. And this is a wonderful part of Hollywood history, which has been saved and restored, and it is back to its former glory days. The pig and whistle right here on Hollywood Boulevard, a wonderful part of Hollywood's past, and now, thankfully, a wonderful part of its present and its future. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now, I bet you thought our visit to the pig and whistle was over. Uh-uh, not by a long shot, because right now we've come just half a block down Hollywood Boulevard, turned here on Las Palmas, and we are continuing the pig and whistle story right inside here in the original Michelli's Pizzeria, which is a wonderful part not only of Hollywood history, but of pig and whistle history as well. And here's the man himself, Carmen Michelli. I'm the guy. Well, we're here to spend a little bit of time in your place. You know, we were at the old pig and whistle just a minute ago. I heard, yes. But there's a lot of the old pig and whistle here in your restaurant. It's all here. That's so all. So all of this wood. Yes. This. 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 Like that. The chandeliers. All of it. All of it. How in the world did you get? Well, they were demolishing it. And I happened to walk by, so I made a deal with the demolisher. When was this? Oh, 1956, I guess, 57. You mean they were after the pit? Oh, look at this. Oh, this is beautiful. And their stools, they still got the original stools. Oh, look. Oh, look at these stools. Aren't they something? These are the they don't make them like that anymore. All the way down. And the bar? And the doors. Look at the door back here. And all of the back of the bar. So they were, they were taking all of it out to make were, a pizza place, weren't they? They were going to demolish it and ruin it. And I, uh, like I say, I made a deal and I bought all the wood. Took me a little time uh, to put it all together, but it, uh, it's here. Boy, I bet you got it for a steal, too. I you? stole it, yes. Because they didn't want. They didn't want it. All they wanted to do was wreck and clear the room out. So I uh, did my thing, and uh, this is it. This is a pig and whistle. Where is he? Right here. I think I like that guy. Oh, look, right on the side of the phone booth. Isn't that something? Oh, my God. 
This is absolutely amazing. And you know, I've been in your place many, many times. I'm sure you have. Everybody and has. I've never noticed the ceiling up here. Oh, yeah. That's all the wood I got out of the pig and whistle. And I put it together. It took me about five years to do it, but I did it. Boy. Looks pretty good, doesn't it? Do most people, when they come in here, have any idea what they're looking at, this piece of history? Not really. Uh, what they do, they look at it and they appreciate it. Uh -huh. What can I tell you? Yeah. They appreciate now, I bet it. you remember the Pig and Whistle from oh, its course, heyday. Of course, of course. It was a swinging room. Was it? Sure. Now, what do you mean a swinging room? Well, I mean, they had uh, all the movie stars would go there, for instance. Hollywood Boulevard was a pretty famous place at one time. Mm -hmm. Coming back, I understand. Yeah. And old Musso Frank's been there since 1919. That's and, one of my favorites. And this place has been there since 1921. Of course, I'm a newcomer. I'm here only since 49. Yeah. Makes a difference. Well, it's really nice that you kept this, that you saved it. What would have happened to it if you hadn't gotten it? Oh, they'd have burned it. They'd have destroyed it. It'd gone to some dump somewhere. Of course. You know, we don't appreciate our history like we should, do we? Well, I do. I think we should. We should. I have a window here from 1909 and 1913, from USC, by the way. Do they know you've got that window? No. Oh, they know I have it, uh, they, and they want it. <laughs> I might give it them one of these days. <laughs> so you're holding I mean, on I, to it yourself. I, I may donate it. My, my children went there to USC. You know? wow. I should give it to them, shouldn't I? Well, you should. Yeah. You should. When? <laughs> <laughs> hey, thanks for showing us around. My I have pleasure. a new appreciation for your place here. Oh, thank you. And isn't it interesting that not only did you save it from the Wreckers Ball, but it's really just right around the corner. Boy, it didn't cool. even go that far. It didn't go that far. I carried it over here. It's heavy stuff, by the way. Of course, I was young and strong. Now I'm old and strong. <laughs> <laughs> That's the way it is here at Michelli's. A little bit of the pig and whistle lives in here as well. Absolutely. Uh, and it's all part of Hollywood's wonderful history. Sometimes Hollywood's kind of hidden or forgotten or unknown history. True. Who would have ever thought that that's where you got the wood? But it's a wonderful, wonderful Hollywood story. Well, that's nice. I'm glad you appreciate Thank it. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. That's you. the way it is down here at Michelli's right. on Las Palmas. Absolutely. Right, He's buddy. part of Hollywood history, too. Eh, 49 since 1949. That's a long time. My waitress has been here since uh, 1951. Hasn't missed a day, by the way. <laughs> Check her out. <laughs>